Prologue. Outer space. Enter chorus. Alack, what dreadful turmoil has beset the strong republic and its bonds of peace? Or distant trade routes all do sigh and fret, as fears of grim taxation do increase. The greedy, vile trade federation hath created a blockade none may pass through. With deadly battleships they block the path unto the little planet called Naboo. Whilst politicians endlessly debate, the Chancellor Supreme plies strategy. He sends two Jedi to negotiate, they who keep peace within the galaxy. In time so long ago begins our play in troubled galaxy far, far away. Exit. Aboard the Republic cruiser and aboard the Trade Federation battleship. Enter rumor. Open your hearts for which of you will stop the vent of feeling when loud rumor speaks. Her flaming tongue with poison tip shall drop on rest from Tatooine to Naboo's peaks. See how, with mere suggestion of attacks, begin Star Wars that shall your eyes amaze. Enraging Federation with false facts, good sport did make for rumor's cunning ways. Inciting the Republic to respond, now set the game afoot on every side. Thus shall I cause new worries to be spawned. Hint of a dark forest rising I'll provide. E'en till the proud Republic longeth for protection from some unknown looming threat. Replete with fear, each heart shall be full sore, ere I have ceased the worry I beget. Quick now, and let this merry play begin, unveil the Empire's full prehistory. Ere in groundlings waiting weeks to be let in, look forward to the wonders they shall see. Start now, what you have longed for, sans delay. Attend, a phantom menace comes anon. Ye shall be pulled into our clever play, ears hearken to this story that doth draw Exit. Enter Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, pilot and captain. I say, good captain. Aye, sir, what's your will? Pray, make communication unto the Trade Federation battleship in the here. Tell them that we board their ship anon. Captain addresses Newt Gunray via comlink. With great respect and humble mien, good sir. With all for the Trade Federation's might, the brave ambassadors would swiftly board your ship with your permission and consent. Methinks the captain's words are oversweet. Indeed, we nothing herein have to hide. And if you know full well, our blockade is within the bounds of the Republic's law. Your kind ambassadors shall be received as we would welcome all Republic guests. Aye. Exit Newt Gunray from Comlink. Thus shall we fly unto their battleship and land within the core of its vast frame. These Federation ships are massive, aye and run to excess for a mere blockade. Yet when taxation is the greater theme, the melody oft leans towards life or death. It is an ancient song that all know, all know well. The notes of levies ring with morbid null, indeed, it may mostly verily be said, but only death and taxes certain are. The Republic ship lands inside the battleship. Many droids surround the ship. Enter droid TC-14 to speak with Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Pilot and captain remain in Republic ship. My name is TC-14, at your aid. I prithee come with me, good gentlemen. Your visit doth bring honor unto us, ambassadors of high and noble blood. Be now at ease, and wait upon my lord, for he shall hither come speak with you. Exit TC-14. I have a bad feeling about this, master. Yet I sense nothing. Wherefore art thou tense? Tis not about the mission. Something else, elusive, tis... I difficult to name. Oh, center not on thy anxiety, young Obi-Wan. Thy concentration here maintain, within this very moment now. For such is where thy focus doth belong. But Master Yoda hath instructed me to be heir mindful of the future, for its advent may have meaning in my life. Tis true, yet future possibility must not be kept within the forefront of thy mind at expense of what is here, the present moment. Be air mindful of the living force, my worthy Padawan. Aye, Master. Then, unto the present time, how do you think the Viceroy shall respond unto the noble Chancellor's demands? Methinks there can be little doubt in this. These Federation dogs are cowardly, and shall be quick to heal at our command. Negotiations shall be swift indeed. Enter Newt Gunray, Dalte, Dauphine, and TC-14 above the balcony. What didst thou say, thou terror-speaking droid? Just what my sockets hath observed, my lord. These two ambassadors are Jedi Knights. 
This I did prophesy in my mind's eye. The two have come to force a settlement. Go thou, and make some keen distraction there. I must make contact with Lord Sidious. Hast thou lost all thy power of intellect, thou jarring fool-born simple-minded rogue? I shall not go where Jedi steps do tread. Instead, send one insensible to fear. This droid shall serve our purpose. Going on. Next to TC-14 from Balcony. Is it their nature so to make us wait? Nay. Truly I do sense a fear too grand for such a wee affair as trade disputes. Enter TC-14 with serving tray. I serve the drinks, these Jedi to appease, and in doing so serve my master's will. We droids are here to serve, tis protocol. Yet here my service lacketh etiquette, for it doth serve these Jedi to deceive. TC-14 serves drinks to Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Enter Darth Sidious in beam on balcony. Speaking with Newt Gunray and Dalte Dofi. What is it? The scheme that you have schemed hath failed, Lord Sidious. Our ruse in this blockade is finished. For would we dare fight against the Jedi? Nay, it would be foolishness. Hear me now, Viceroy. I'll not have this futh. This stunted slime of rank and worthless nerve, this craven, simple-minded lump of flesh within my presence ere again. Put not such weak examples of resolve and will before a mighty Sith. Exit Dalte Dauphine. This recent twist of fate's blind spinning wheel hath luckless been. We must therefore accelerate our plans. Begin to send the troops unto Naboo. My lord, your words astound. For shall the law be with us in this action we shall take? I tell thee, I am arbiter and law. It shall be legal if I make it so. And what shall we do with these two Jedi, then? T'was ill-conceived of the Chancellor to bring the Jedi into this affair. Hear my command and follow. Kill them both. Indeed, my lord. As you wish, it shall be. Exit Darth Sidious from beam. Exit Newt Gunray. Enter pilot and captain. Aside in Republic ship. Alas, good captain. Look upon the guns. They turn in our direction. We are slain. Raise shields, my man, to grant us some defense. Too late, too late. The Trade Federation guns fire on the Republic ship, killing the pilot and captain. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan brandish their lightsabers. What villainy is this? My senses tell of some abrupt attack. I sense it too, my master. I believe our comrades have been killed whilst they did wait. Gas begins to seep into the room. <clears throat> and what is more, now comes a vapor rank. Dioxin, poison gas, pray hold thy breath. The Jedi hold their breath. Enter battle droids, including Oa-1, standing at attention outside door. Enter Newt Gunray in beam. For certain, they are dead by now. Since these two Jedi are not politicians, they are not with hot air filled, they thus not have the stores of breath essential to survive. Still, go and destroy what remnant may remain. Exit Newt Gunray from beam. The door opens. TC-14 passes through the doorway and sees the battle droids. I beg your pardon. Droids of metal made. Go forth. Investigate, good corporal. Forsooth. Forsooth. The Jedi come forth suddenly, fighting. Enter Newt Gunray, Ruin Hako, and Tei Hao aside on bridge. Fight for our masters, true! What now? The monitors have been destroyed? What circumstance unhappy doth befall? Transmitten hath been wholly lost, my liege. Hast thou ever had a clash with Jedi Knights? Nay, uh, truly not till now. Uh, thy warning doth give me some pause. Seal off the bridge entire! Indeed! Dost thou not see? Tis not enough! And call a host of droidicars anon! Yet thou art death, and in thy panic shalt not listen to the truth! We'll not survive. The bridge doors are sealed as the Jedi continue to fight in advance. The battle droids are worthless when faced by the power of the Force. All are overthrown. Indeed. Now may my lightsaber be to this door the key that we may entrance make. Qui-Gon uses his lightsaber to bore through the bridge door. Behold, they come. Swift, close the blast doors. Close the blast doors. 
I for certain that shall keep the two at bay until the fearsome droid cars appear. The lightsaber cuts not as it did before. Belike another door hath sealed the way. Well played, shrewd sirs, and yet not well enough. Observe the power of the burning sun, this mystic beam I wield here in my hand. Qui-Gon pushes his lightsaber directly through the center of the door. They still make headway. How is possible? Where are the droidicas thou summoned forth? Enter droidicas. My master, look! Destroyer droids approach! Qui-Gon pulls his lightsaber from the door to face the droidicas, which begin shooting at the Jedi. They generate their own strong shields, too! Bye! We parry every blast! Ugh. They'll not break through, but neither are we close enough to strike, and their strong shields do block what we reflect. Tis but an errant game, and none can win. So let us fly, and find another way. Exunt, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan. The droidicas have sent them fleeing! Ah! Sir, I report, the Jedi speedily retreat unto the ventilation shaft. Exunt, Newt, Gunray, Ruin Hako, and Tei Hao. Enter Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi to the main hangar above on balcony. Do you behold this here, young Obi-Wan? Tis battle droids, and hundreds may have more. Indeed. An army for invasion made. This is a strategy most strange for the Trade Federation. By my troth, this strange and unexpected twist doth warrant care. We must inform the innocent Naboo, and Chancellor Valorum too. Hear this, my young apprentice. Let us split our paths, and use these ships to transport to, to Naboo, where on the planet's surface we shall meet. Aye, Master. I shall do as you command, and rendezvous with you on Naboo. What's more, your foresight wise, they could not thwart. Negotiations were, indeed, quite short. Exunt. Scene 2. On the planet Naboo and aboard the Trade Federation battleship. Enter Queen Amidala. Those older do surround, air pressing in, and questioning each word that I do speak. One thinks I shall a poor decision make, another thinks himself more competent. The best of them do bow and show respect, and treat me with the difference due to my throne. Yet even their eyes speak of disbelief. Their courtesy becomes a stifling thing. A young, a youth is no more frail than older folk. No less intelligent, no less sublime. Our steps are newer, yet we are no jewel to be protected and encased by them. We know of violence and life's harsh ways. Our tears descend in grief as their tears do. We are not made of softer stuff than they. The moods we feel oft run irate and rough. We have no thoughts less noble than our elders. In truth, compassion may we ably teach. Then why is to not thought that youth are so beneath those older than we are of any rank? Tis foolishness, yeah. Tis foul treachery. And if e'er these older ones could look within and plumb the depths of youth, what wonders would before their eyes appear? The courage, strength, and valor it requires to be a youth. The daily struggle to survive amid the thousand constant doubts we do receive from every person and those who are dear. The ever-present skirmishes within those of our own age, who should support and praise us bound within the sacred bond of youth, but who instead do injure with harsh words. To be a youth within a world run by an older generation taketh strength. Yeah, that beyond a hundred elders' might, to be youth and leader is truly to be a target ever in their sights. I would not trade my station for the world, nor would I wish it on mine enemy. Although the path is fraught, this is our cause. We youth shall mold the future we desire. Queen Amidala presses a comlink switch. Enter Newt Gunray, Rune Hakao, and Tei Hao, above a balcony in Trade Federation Battleship. Transmission from the planet of Naboo. It is Queen Amidala, I herself. At last, we shall begin to see results. The speaking to the head of, shall move the body. Again, you come before us, Highness Grand. I do. Yet thou shalt not be pleased when thou hast heard what I intended to say to thee. Thine errant boycott of our planets through. Your words are not but deep surprise to me. For of our failure, I've had no report. I am aware that the ambassadors who were by Chancellor Valorum sent 
have come to thee, and thou art ordered to come to a settlement o'er this blockade. And yet I know of no ambassadors. For certain you have made a gross mistake. I... Alas, have all our plans been thwarted then? Beware, I warn thee, Viceroy, for tis true, the Federation hath made steps too bold. I know not what you mean, good lady queen. We would do nothing, sans the Senate say. As doth befit your youth and woman's fear, your highness doth assume too much, indeed, mine. Oh, we shall see how mine assumptions fare. Exit Queen Amidala. In troth, the lady is correct, the Senate. Tis far too late. What's done can't be undone, my... I so. But do you think she doth expect the swift attack that we are bound to make? Nay, I know not. Yet this at least is clear. We must disrupt communications to the planet, lest they learn of our intent. Exut Newt Dunray, Rune Hakao, and Tehau. Enter Queen Amidala with Seal Bebel, Captain Panaka, court and attendants. Enter Senator Palpatine in beam. What does you say? Negotiations have not reached a starting point, because the two ambassadors did never arrive. But nay, how could that tale be true? The Chancellor himself informed me that the ambassadors most surely did arrive. Negotiations I should pretty be- thee, Senator. Where hast thou gone? What is the matter? What hath happened here? Check our transmission generator, lad. If our communication hath been breached, it means but one thing only. An attack. The Federation would not go so far, for such a move would mean their suicide. I do agree. The Senate would revoke the Federation's trade ability, which would destroy their commerce all at once. Negotiation must be our found hope. Negotiation? Highness, we have lost communication. And as yet we know of no ambassadors who have brought suit unto the Federation for our sake. Oh, how he sneers and mocks mine utterance, as he would never do were I his age. The situation is most grave, my queen. If an invasion comes, the meager slight security our volunteers provide shall be no contest for the hardened ranks the Federation surely shall employ. I hear thee, counselors, and may hear more but will condone no move that leads to war. Exunt. Scene 3 on the planet Naboo. Enter battle droids, including Um-9. Enter Newt Gunray and Runa Kao in beam. How may I serve you, Viceroy? What is your will? Pay heed now, Captain. We have searched the ship and found no trace of Jedi Knights therein. Tis possible they hide aboard thy craft. If they are here, good sir, we shall detect them and destroy them as we were enjoined. Pray, use thou caution. Underestimate these Jedi at thy peril. Vigilance! Exut Newt Gunray and Rune Hakao from Bean. Enter Qui-Gon Jinn, hidden. With hundreds of these battle droids, I fly unto the planet that doth wait below. Yea, unbeknownst to its kind citizens, attack doth cruelly come to break their peace. The craft hath landed. Run, ere we are found. Qui-Gon begins to run from the craft amid fleeing Qualumpas Siths, pursued by battle droids. Enter Jar Jar Binks, hidden, seeing Qui-Gon Jinn. A man approacheth, cloud in Jedi garb. Be like this man brings aid unto Naboo, such as will help my people and my land. Mayhaps this is the chance I have desired, for I have wandered low these many months, uh, thinking over this planet's dreary fate. Two people separated by their fear and prejudice, which e'er doth make us shirk from giving help unto each other. I, it may be that the only hope for us to be united is to realize that our two fates are tightly knit as one. Perchance this Jedi, followed by these droids, doth bring the words to break our deep mistrust. I shall make introduction in my way, portray the part that I have learned so well. It doth befit the human prejudice to think we Gungans simple, low, and rude. I shall approach him thusly, yet shall bend him to the path that shall assist us all. Put on thy simple wits now, Jar Jar Binks. Thus play the role of a clown to stoke his pride. Jar Jar stands in Qui-Gon's path. Qui-Gon runs into him, and the two fall as the battle droid's transport passes over them. Oh, moi moi, I so love ye. Thou brainless knave, almost thou killed us both. I speak ye, I speak ye, look at me me. That thou canst speak doth not yet make thee wise. 
Now go ye hence, away! Your kind did teach me human language, and my prophet aunt is I know how to move your human heart. So I shall speak most like a Gungan plain, and thus disarm you by a fool's deceit. Nay, nay! Why, sir! Oh, Misa, stay! Oh, Misa, call ye Jar Jar Binks, see? Now Misa is your humble servant! Tis quite unnecessary, simple beast. Oh, nay! It's necessary! Commanded by the gods, it is ye! Enter Obi-Wan Kenobi, pursued by two battle droids. Qui-Gon Jinn destroys the droids. Now twice you have saved my life -y. What creature, friend, is this? A, a local, I, a, a piteous native with a simple mind. Now let us hence afore more droids arrive. Did he say more and more? Excuse me. And now to cast the line that plants the hook. The safer place is Gunga City. Tis where I grew up, a hidden city. Mayhap this lack would have purpose yet. A city. Canst thou take us there, kind brute? Oh, nay, as I me think ye, nay, nay. And wherefore not, amphibious buffoon? Oh, tis embarrassing, me banished. If I return and see the bosses, then they will work me woe, you get ye? A sound is heard in the distance. Dost thou hear that grave sound? It is the noise made by a thousand, thousand woes to come. If they discover us, we shall be crushed by the ground into a million fleshy bits. Oblivion shall be our final home. Ye make ye good the pointy. This away. These men have prejudice deep in their hearts, for looking on me they see savagery, a native, local, piteous, buffoon. With such dark slurs they slander my whole race. Yet Gungans quickly shall destroyed be if this attack doth touch our soggy home. Be like the Jedi are our only hope. Thus, though I was cast out for mine ideas, and I have for many moons gone wandering above the waters of my home, where I have studied human ways and learned their speech, I shall return to make amends and bring these Jedi to the people to whom I am bound. So I may save my entire race, to thine own kind be true, so say I err. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice, at least the voice that speaketh with wise words. Let them hear only speech of ruffian. My truer voice I'll hide with outward squeaks of, Misa, Yusa, and excuse me, sir! So shall the simple lead the high and wise, that all of us may dwell in harmony. I prithee, Jar Jar, how much further on? We goey underwater, kay? But hear me a warning too, sir! The Gungans like ye, not outside us. The welcome may not be so warmy. Ah, fear thou not. This has not been a day made for the warmth of hospitality. Jar Jar leads the Jedi to the water's edge, where they plunge in and swim to Gunga City. Enter Gungans, including Captain Tarples. Now, Misa home. So good it feely. The Gungans begin to shrink back at the approach of Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar. Hey, you, sir, stop her there. What brings you here? Hey, old Dally, good Captain Tarples. Nay, Jar Jar, not again. Now, you, sir, shall go to the bosses. You say, indeed. Captain Tarples steps forward and prods Jar Jar with his power pole, zapping him. How wood, indeedy. Ay, how woody. Now, come all with me to see the boss. Captain Tarples and the other Gungans escort Qui Gon, Obi Wan, and Jar Jar into the chamber of the bosses. Enter Boss Ness and other Gungan bosses. I bid to you, sir, welcome, gentlemen. But you, sir, cannot be here. This array of mechaniques above is you's we song. They are your problem, -y, not our, sir, nay. An army all comprised of droids shall soon make their attack upon the kind Naboo. We must give them a warning, with your aid. But Misa do not like ye the Nabu. They think they are so wise and full of wit. The moment that the battle droids have done with the Nabu, the Nabu, uh, <laughs> uh, the moment that the battle droids have done with the Nabu, they shall descend into these murky depths and seize control of you. But Misa now I think ye so. 
The droids know not of unseen ear. Uh, have you no eyes? Is enmity so strong it makes you blind? You two, the Gungans and the Naboo, do form a circle symbiont. The rock that's thrown into your lake makes waves upon their shores. The quake that shakes their land doth make your own dear city move as though twere rocked by giants. The same sun shines upon you both. The same rain falls and bringeth water to each one. The plant that takes root in your miry depths doth spread its leaves above for them to see. Your fate is theirs. And I, their fate is yours. This Jedi speaketh with a wisdom keen. But Weeza do not care about the Naboo. Qui-Gon uses a Jedi mind trick on Boss Ness. In that case, prithee, speed us on our way. Yeah, Misa gonna speed you bore away. And we shall have the need for transport too. And Wisa gonna give you una bongo. The speediest way to get to the Naboo is going through the planet core. Now hence! With gratitude we give thee thanks, Boss Nass, and leave your worthy court with wish of peace. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan turn to leave. Say, Master, what doth una bongo mean? Methinks it is a transport. So hope I. Tis now or never if I were to join their cause. Oh, this is setting you up, certain. Go to the planet core, bad bombing, and any help there would be hot, eh? Time runneth short, my master. Shall we go? A navigator who shall guide us through the planet core would be most useful, I. What shall become of this one? Jar Jar Binks. He isn't to have punishment severe. Yet I did save his life, and oweth he a debt of life to me in recompense. Your gods have given Jar Jar O to me. He shall go with me by divine command. Binks? You sir have a life play with a his? Oh yes, sir. Me sir do we, bossa? Ah, uh, fie. Be gone with him. Good riddance, den. Ah, nay, count me right out of this here. This better dead here than that decor. Oh, what a Misa speaker. Come link. Exune, Boss Nasp, Gungan bosses, and other Gungans, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar enter the transport. And now we venture to the planet core, a place most dangerous, it does beseem. Oh, this is nutsin. Gooberfish, oh! Why wert thou banished, Jar Jar? Prithee, tell. If I could tell them true, they'd not believe. For who would think that simple-minded Binks would come to have such thoughts expensive as could threaten even the Gungan bosses, eh? Oh well, do I recall how they'd assessed the strange beliefs that I'd begun to speak, that Gungans and Naboo had equal strength, that we did need them even as they needed us that our two races should not be hostile be, that our best future lay as one, not two. Such thoughts as these were reprehensible to all the bosses, thus my banishment. Yet this is not the story I'll relate. Oh, it's a long a tale, you see ya, but small part being me so clumsy. Thou wert an exile for thy clumsiness. Ah, you so mightn't be a uh, say that. Enter Opie, hidden. My lord, Darth Sidious has sent me here, across the galaxy, to help destroy these wretched Jedi. Oh, what pleasure it shall give me, not just to fulfill the will of my great master. Nay, but there is more. My villainous assignment also doth bring with it promise of supper rich. The best employment bringeth one enjoyment. So, maybe... Misa cause unor, uh, maybe two we accidenti? I boomed a gasser, then I banished. The OB catches the transport with its tongue. Oh, nay! Oh, nay! Oh, this a trouble! Enter Sando Aqua Monster aside. 
fear not, my brother Jedi, for I come sent by the Jedi Council to Naboo to guard the Good Republic's interest. My post is in the groaning waters blue, where I do stand there ready to protect their passage through the planet Viscous Core. And now my chance hath come to save their lives. Though I am Sando Aqua monster called, I am not monstrous, nay, virtuous. The Sando Aqua monster eats the opi and exits. Deep in the sea, tis true, as tis in life. One fish seems vast, as giant as a fish, was e'er thought possible to be. We fear, nay, cower, in its presence, for we think that it doth portend our sure and certain death. Now, whether tis a fish most literal, the like of which our ship has just escaped here, or be like, tis but some metaphor, e'en some great challenge or some enemy, mayhap some test we must overcome, unless we call upon the force to see, correctly, that the thing is not so grand, know this, you ever shall live life in fear. Hence, my young Padawan, and Jar Jar Binks, Air bear in mind this plain and vital truth. Remember that you must have confidence enough to know. There's air a bigger fish. Oh, Misa think we going back now? But where are we so going to, sir? Fret not, we shall be guided by the force. Oh, Max a big, the force you say, eh? But that is smell a stink of weefy. The console begins to beep. <laughs> Alas, the power swiftly runneth out. Oh, nay! Oh, we said die in here! Pray calm thyself. No trouble have we yet. What yet? The monster swimming out there? All leaking and a sinking here? When you so thinking we in trouble? Enter Colo Claw, hidden. My brother will be failed, will all succeed. The specials shall become my banquet feast. Of those I serve my masters by my belly. The power is restored. With it, our chance. The lights of the transport turn on to reveal the Colo Claw, which attempts to eat the ship. <sighs> From one great trial to another yet, I feel as though some hand doth guide us here. Enter Sando Aqua Monster as the transport dodges the Colo Claw. I come again to rescue my brave friends. Flee twixt my teeth, but you, O oh Colo Brute are not so fortunate. Feel my sharp bite! I'll break my fast upon your treacherous hide. The Sando Aqua Monster eats the Colo Claw and exits. Thus are we safe again. Head for that slope. For the Force, no sea may sink our hope. Exunt. Scene 4. Aboard the Trade Federation battleship. Enter Newt Gunray, Rune Hakau, and in beam, Darth Sidious. The invasion doth proceed apace, my lord. I have with cunning slowed the senate's speed, arresting by procedure their advance. They shall have little choice but to accept the strong control you hold over small Naboo. The queen has faith, misguided to be sure, and doth believe the senate sides with her. Queen Amidala's but an ingenue. Controlling her shall not be difficult. Indeed, my lord. Exit Darth Sidious from beam. One thing you did omit. Not of the missing Jedi did you speak. Why give him reason to make loud retort? We shall report when we have something to report. Exunt. Scene 5 on the planet Naboo. Enter Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Jar Jar Binks in transport, surfacing in the waters of Naboo. Our journey through the core is made at last. And now shall we make a way unto the queen to warn her of this threat most imminent. Come, Obi-Wan and Jar Jar. Let us hence. Exunt. Enter Newt Gunray and Rune Hakau with several battle droids, including Ohm-9. The queen hath been detained, Viceroy. Good. This victory doth taste most succulent and stares the hunger of my wide ambition. Enter Sabe, dressed as Queen Amidala, Seal Bibble, Captain Panaka, Padme, and other members of the Naboo court, guarded by battle droids. 
How shalt thou hope to justify this bold attack upon our peaceful planet? Speak! The Queen and I shall sign a treaty soon. It shall confer legitimacy on our occupation of the city here. I have been told the Senate shall with haste proceed to ratify the treaty. Aye, methinks the Queen shall find it in her heart to move her hand and make the needed mark that shall deliver her dear populace. No treaty shall I sign. You shall not have cooperation in this matter. Nay. <laughs> Be sensible, your highness, else we shall persuade you through the suffering of Naboo. The cries most piteous, the horrid groans, the gleam of Bodkin's touch, and the scream of pain, the agony that comes from torture cruel. These moments bleak shall have sway o'er your will. And now, Commander, take and process them, boy. I prithee, Captain, take them to Camp 4. Forsooth, forsooth. Exunt, Newt Gunray and Rune Hakao. Enter Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Jar Jar Binks above, on balcony. The Queen, now is the time. The Force we leap with all, for victory! Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Jar Jar leap down and begin fighting the battle droids. <clears throat> oh! With what ease these droids defeated are. Had they but any skill in combat, we would asser- We would certain be outnumbered. Yet with such a lack of acumen, ugh, these droids are no more frightening than if they were but toys. The Jedi destroy the battle droids. Your Highness, it would be best to leave the streets. Ye courtiers, take the weapons of the droids. Oh, wow, sir! You sir guys so bombad! The group moves aside off the street. We are ambassadors, and we're sent here by our wise chancellor. Ambassador, your effort at negotiation has failed. If I were you, a new trade I would ply. Nay, by a Jedi's oath, there never were negotiations, only violence. Tis urgent now that we make contact with the brave Republic. Time runs quickly out. Communication means have been destroyed. But what of transport? Is there some nearby? Within the hangar. Follow me anon. The group walks to the hangar, revealing more battle droids. Alas, too many enemies therein. Like evil thoughts, these droids do multiply. It will be no problem for we, too, we Jedi too. The weak shall be overcome by those more skilled. Your Highness, prithee journey with we too to Coruscant. Be like you will be safe, and may before the Senate plead your cause. With gratitude I greet your proffered aid, but rightfully my place is on Naboo. Yet they shall take your life should you remain. Nay, surely they would never be so bold. They need the Queen to sign their treaty, so to render this invasion legal. Should they kill her, they would lose their one defense. And yet I sense there may be more at play. What games afoot is still a mystery. No logic guides the Federation's moves. My feeling is, they mean to do you harm. I would not have a queen become a pawn. Well, then our only hope is for the Senate's help. The Senator in Palpatine shall need your good assistance in this matter, ma'am. The situation grave is dangerous. Aye, dangerous for all who shall go forth. If we are brave, your highness, we shall go. If you would leave, your highness, it will be now. Enough. I am engaged. I'll challenge this, and venture forth to plead my case before the Senate. Hope shall be our strength and stay. They begin walking towards the transport. Enter battle droids guarding pilots, including Rick Olay. The pilots must be freed if we would fly. T'would be my joy to free them of their bonds. Obi-Wan makes his way towards the pilots as Qui-Gon is stopped by a guard droid. Desist at once, and take no further step. I am the Chancellor's ambassador. I tell thee I must take these people here to Coruscant. Well, where shalt thou take them? To Coruscant, thou brute. Why, you shall take them to, then, to Coruscant. Alack, this does go against my programming. Doth not compute. Behold, I place you all under arrest. Thou shalt a ghost droid be ere I am through. Qui-Gon destroys guard droid with his lightsaber. Obi-Wan destroys droids guarding pilots. Sabe, Padme, and 
Captain Panaka begin to board transport. Anon, we fly. Ye pilots all, make haste. The pilots run to various vessels. Rick Olay boards the Queen's transport with Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. It is my duty and mine honor to protect and serve the Queen, whom I adore. The ship flies off, exhumed. Enter Obi-Wan Kenobi and Jar Jar Binks, a side and ship, with astromech droids, including R2-D2. Pray, stay thou here, and mischief do thou none. Exit Obi-Wan. Hey ho, my lads, are ye misunderstood as Jar Jar Binks and his dear Gungans, eh? Know ye of human prejudice and scorn? Methinks ye must, as all non-humans do. Exit Jar Jar. Enter Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Captain Panaka, and Rick Olay in cockpit. Blockade doth appear to work us woe. They shoot at us, and we are sorely hit. The generator of the shield is down. Oh, me hap this doth token our defeat. Astromech droids move outside the ship to repair the shield generator. Beep, burr, beep, squeak, beep, meow, beep, meow. It is my time to serve and prove my worth. I would the brave Republic serve with pride, for I do long for some adventurous life. With galaxies to see and quests to take, and even more, I long to be inspired and join a noble cause to which I may contribute all my strength and skill and wit. Now to it, R2, serve thy very best. Several astromech droids are destroyed by fire from the blockade. Alas, these droids do fall like winter snow, each flake snuffed out by flaming sword of fire. We soon shall have no more, and then we're lost. Without the generator, we are dead. The shots shall find their mark and end our lives. The shields are gone. Tis done, my comrades. Done. Beep, weep, beep, woo! But oh, what sign is this? The power hath returned, and with it, too, our prospect of survival. Oh, hurrah! The droid hath done the deed. You bypassed the main power drive. Deflector shields are up to maximum effect, and we are saved. R2-D2 returns inside the ship. Oh, one thing remains, however worthy friends. Their ship hath not sufficient power to deliver us to Coruscant. It is the hyperdrive. It leaketh out like blood from some deep wound within its metal core. We must make landing to repair. Refuel. No ship is ship-shape sans a solid structure. Look, Master, here is found a planet near. I have not heard its name. Tis Tatooine. Tis small and poor and far from everything. The Federation hath no presence there. Uh, what confidence have you in this remark? The planet is controlled by the huts. The huts, indeed. Such lowly gangsters of base reputation, filled with avarice. Their minds on money. Money on their minds. Such lowly, worm-like villainy as theirs. No royalty should e'er bear witness to. Or forced to be to find the strength to injure. Oh, nay. Ye Jedi's, find another course. Pray let us not take her to Tatooine. Even if they did discover her, t'would be no different than if our lame ship were bound for any place the Federation holds. Except, my friend, the Huts expect her not, nor are they searching for the noble queen. We do then have a strong advantage here. Thus let us land, and with hopefulness sincere. Exempt.